Welcome to Choice Classic Radio. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and help keep this show alive by donating at choiceclassicradio.com. For more of your favorite old-time radio shows, join us on our companion podcast, Choice Classic Radio, Mystery, Suspense, Dramas, and Horrors, where we bring to you the most mysterious tales that the golden age of radio had to offer. And now, with 677 episodes made, airing on the Mutual Broadcast Network from 1937 to 1954, we bring to you The Shadow. Thrilling Adventures of the Shadow are on the air, brought to you each week at this time by your neighborhood blue coal dealer. These dramatizations are designed to demonstrate forcibly to old and young alike that crime does not pay. Think about your coal supply now, and you won't have to worry about it later. Order the coal you'll need for the rest of the season right now. Fill your coal bin to the top, and then you'll be protected against any possible delay or interruption in deliveries. Your blue coal dealer is able to take care of your needs immediately. He has a good supply of this superior home fuel on hand. But war conditions, plus sudden changes in temperature, may quickly change this situation. So it's wise to play safe. Ask your blue coal dealer to fill your coal bin right now and be safe. Telephone him tomorrow. The Shadow, mysterious character who aids the forces of law and order, is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. Several years ago in the Orient, Cranston learned a strange and powerful secret, the secret of hypnotic power to cloud men's minds so that they cannot see him. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the voice of the invisible shadow belongs. Today's drama, Dead Man's Revenge. Mr. McPhail, 20 minutes. There it is, boys. Sorry. The interview's over. Ah, now, Mr. McPhail, you promised us a story for our paper. Look, Mr. McPhail, a leading theatrical director like you is news. Give us something. Something about your career, maybe. Oh, you heard the call, boys. I've only 20 minutes before... You theatrical people are always in a hurry. Couldn't be that you're getting nervous, could it, Mr. McPhail? (laughs) No, it couldn't. Not after all my years on the stage... This is old stuff for me, boy. Ah, then give us a break. We're trying to get a lead off for the morning edition. You've got the time, Mr. McPhail. All right. All right, I haven't got the time, but I'll give you your lead off just the same. That's the way to talk. I guess you all know something about this story anyway. It happened while I was rehearsing a new three-character play in the old John Carter Theater. Uh, Just a second. Uh, John Carter Theater. There hadn't been a play to open in that theater for 20 years. Not since the great John Carter, the actor for whom the place was named, had passed away. I begged the backers not to rent it. Why, McPhail? The theater was jinxed, people said. Yeah, something about a curse. A curse of 20 years standing. But the backers ignored me, rented the place anyhow. I didn't like the idea, but I... I had Miss Morty Stilwell for the star. The play was shaping up beautifully. Then... The night before the private dress rehearsal, the trouble began. But how did it begin? What happened, Mr. McPhail? Well, there was a night watchman, you see. A man who'd worked around the theater ever since old John Carter himself was alive. That night, 
He was making his rounds in the dark, musty cellars of the place. Later, the police established that it was just about midnight when the strangest occurrence... There ain't nothing down here. Everything's all right. Uh, uh, I guess I'll go up and doze off. And what was that? There is something down here. Who's there? I heard your cane tapping. Come on now. I got a gun here, and if you give me any trouble, I'll... I won't give you any trouble, Jason. Jason? Nobody's called me by that name for years. I knew you long ago, Jason. Who are you? I've heard there's going to be a play done in this theater, Jason. Yes, that's right. Have all of you forgotten old John Carter's dying wish? His dying wish? Let me remind you. He asked that this building which bears his name never again be used as a theater. Yes, he did. I remember he said it the night he died. It isn't wise to trifle with the wishes of the dead, Jason. Yes, I, I suppose you're right. But it don't make any difference now, eh? He's been dead 20 years. Ain't much he can do about it, eh? That's what the living think, do they? The living? Why do you say the living? What are you? Just an old friend of yours, Jason. Well, come out. Come out where I can see you. I'll come out, Jason. I'll come out. Oh, no. You see who I am, my friend. Oh, it ain't true. It can't be. You recognize me. What are you doing here? What is it you want? A dead man's revenge. Jason. Oh, no. Dead man's revenge. Mr. McPhail, 15 minutes. Well, I'm not going to have time to finish this. Oh, sure you will, Mr. McPhail. Why don't you tell him to stop calling you every five minutes? Oh, I'm used to that, boys. There's always a five-minute call in the theater. Well, then go on while you can. Tell us what happened next. Next? Why, some workmen found the old night watchman around dawn that day. Before he died... He told this fantastic story. The papers got hold of it, and you remember, it was headlined in the noon editions of every newspaper in town. When I reached the theater that afternoon, Lamont Cranston, an old friend of mine, was in the theater green room. There was a young lady with him. Cranston. Hello, McPhail. Uh, you remember Margot Lane, don't you? Oh, yes, of course. How are you, Miss Lane? Well, we're... Just a little bit upset, Mr. McPhail. You see, we... Well... You saw the headlines? Yes. Is that why you came in, Lamont? Well, not exactly. Uh, that is, we... No, it's my fault, really. We just noticed the headlines, or we certainly wouldn't have come here to annoy you. Annoy me? You see, Lamont told me that you were producing a play with only three performers in it. And I thought it was so unusual. And, and... Uh, to come to the point with appropriate blushes... Margot thought we might be able to see the dress rehearsal tonight. Oh. It's not going to be a dress rehearsal. What? Oh, Humphrey. Come in, Humphrey. I am in, McPhail. Uh, Miss Lane, Mr. Cranston, this is Mr. Humphrey, one of the members of our cast. Well, how do you do? How, how do, do you do? do? McPhail, you must call this play off at once. Do you hear me? What? What's the matter with you, Humphreys? Last night's tragedy was nothing compared to what's in store for us if we attempt to carry on with this play. What does he mean? I don't know. The night watchman is strangled in the cellar, so he wants me to toss up a whole production. You know, who do you think it was strangled him, McPhail? Well, I don't know. The police are on the job. They'll find the man. Not this man, they won't. Oh, I think the police are quite capable of tracking down a murderer, Mr. Humphreys. This murderer, Mr. Cranston, was the phantom of old John Carter. John Carter? You're out of your mind. I tell you, the play must not go on. Miss Stilwell and Mr. Graves will want to go on even if you don't. Your crazy ghost stories won't stop them. Well, if the stories don't stop them, I warn you. All right, you, Humphreys, but... you warn me. Now get out. Very well. But remember, whatever happens will be on your head, McPhail. Well, you don't suppose there could be anything in what he says, Lamont? I don't know, Margot. Who was it said, there are more things in heaven and earth 
than are dreamed of in your philosophy. <laughs> well, in that case, this might be the very best time for us to uh, be Miss on Miss Lane. A... Yes, Mr. McPhail. I'd like you and Mr. Cranston to be the only two guests tonight at the first dress rehearsal to be held in the John Carter Theater in 20 years. In 20 years. Well, go ahead. What happened then, Mr. McPhail? That night at the dress rehearsal, Miss Lane Cranston and I were the only people in the audience. The play was going well. The last act was almost over. And then came that scene where the leading woman, the part Miss Stilwell played, is supposed to be accused by an aging composer of stealing his symphony. Oh, it was a very tense moment in the play. I wrote that music. I wrote every note of it. You know I did. Yes, perhaps you did. But the world will never know it. They'll hear those melodies and it'll be my name they'll remember. Listen, I'll play them for you. No, don't. Come away from that organ. <laughs> I can't bear to hear you. <laughs> The world will love me for my music. Listen well, old friend. Forever after, these notes will belong to me. No! No! The next time I hear them, there will be no you. I've killed you. I've killed you. And my song is my own again. <laughs> like it, Margo? Look, I tore my program to shreds. <laughs> well, that's a very good oh, sign. You really? made no mistake producing this, McPhail. You've got a hit on your hands, I'm afraid. Oh, well, thank I, you. I'm going to applaud until they open those curtains oh, again. Oh, there, yeah, it's opening now. <laughs> <laughs> well, Miss Stilwell doesn't seem to appreciate Margot's applause. She's just sitting there at the organ without taking a bow. Oh, maybe she's tired. Oh, what does she keep holding that note for? Enough to drive you out of your mind. We've heard that note, Miss Stilwell. It's very, very pretty, but that'll do now. Oh, Miss Stilwell, please, let up. Stop it. Uh, Graves, Humphreys, one of you make Stilwell cut it out. It's not funny anymore. Who's that coming out on stage? Well, that's Mr. Graves. He's the third member of the cast. Oh, will you make a stop, will you, Graves? I'll try, Mr. McPhail. Miss Stilwell. Miss Stilwell, why don't... Miss Stilwell! Oh, Lamont, Look! She fell. She's lying on the stage. What's going on? What is it, Graves? What's happened up there? I think Miss Stilwell's dead. Mr. McPhail, ten minutes. Go on, McPhail. Don't waste any time. <laughs> I believe you boys would hound a man for a story on the brink of the grave. <laughs> well, naturally... The thought of John Carter's ghost flashed across every one of our minds. The next minute, Miss Lane, Cranston, and I were hurrying up onto the stage. Don't let anyone touch Miss Stilwell's body until the medical examiner gets here. Now you better get everybody up on stage, McPhail. Well, there's only one member missing. It's Mr. Humphreys. Yes, where is Mr. Humphreys? Graves, where's Humphreys? He's up in his dressing room, Mr. McPhail. Oh, shall I tell him you want him? Would you please, Miss Lane? And you, Graves, phone for the police, will you? Yes, which one is Mr. Humphrey's dressing room? Hmm? Uh, it's right up on the staircase there, Miss Lane, number three. Oh, number three. All right, Mr. McPhail. And you can tell him for me, Margot, that it looked very much like he was right after all. Yes, I shall, Lamont. Number two. Number three. Here it is. Mr. Humphreys! Mr. Humphreys! The door's open. Oh. I wonder if... Mr. Humphreys... Mr. Humphreys, where are you? Mr. McPhail said to... Who closed that door? I did, young woman. Who are you? Where's Mr. Humphreys? Mr. Humphreys is regrettably no longer with us. No longer with us? What do you mean? What are you doing in his dressing room? There was something here I had to get. Stand back now. Don't come any closer to me. No, leave me alone. Let me out of here. Come on! No! Let's not call for help. You're well beyond helping, young woman. Yes, there was something here I needed. Something most important to me. Revenge, young woman. Revenge from the tomb. Dead man's revenge. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha,
Act two of Dead Man's Revenge will continue in just a minute. Right now, let's relax a bit and get comfortable. You know, comfort is very important in the blue-cold scheme of things. Your comfort, that is. It's not just a matter of heating your house. Heat by itself doesn't mean comfort. You might be extremely uncomfortable right now, for example, because your home is overheated. Comfort means that you get the right amount of heat at the right time. And that's just exactly the case when you heat with blue coal. Know why? I'll tell you. It's because blue coal is prepared especially for home use. Now, that means a lot. It means, for example, that blue coal is delivered to your home in exactly the right size for your heating plant, which results in more efficient heat, even economical heat. When, on top of that, you have the new blue coal automatic heat regulator, well, a king couldn't ask for more. The regulator saves you thousands of steps up and down stairs, gives you added comfort plus money saved on fuel. The blue coal regulator, you see, automatically adjusts the dampers on your furnace so you get comfortable, even heat in every room. Ask your blue coal dealer for a free, no-obligation demonstration. He's listed under the words blue coal in the yellow section of your classified phone directory. Call him tomorrow. Operator. Operator. Operator! Mr. McPhail! Mr. Cranston! Yes, what is it, Graves? What's the matter? The phone, Mr. McPhail. The wires have been cut. Huh? Uh, Phantom is making a thorough job of this, McPhail. I beg my backers not to rent this theater. McPhail. Yes? Margot. Hasn't she been gone a long time? No, no, she's all right. The dressing room is all the way back at the end of the upstairs corridor. She and Humphreys will be down in a minute. I'll give her just about that long, and I'm going up after her. Perhaps I'd better go for the police, Mr. McPhail. Yes, go on, go on. Tell them to hurry and get back yourself as soon as you can. Yes, sir, I'll do that, Mr. McPhail. I'll do that. Uh, just a moment, Graves. Yes, Mr. Cranston. You took the part of the old composer in the play, didn't you? Yes, that was Graves. He was the one who shot Miss Stillwell at the end of the play. Hmm. Miss Stillwell was shot, wasn't she? And right before our eyes. If you're implying that I... You don't happen to have the gun on you that you used in that scene, do you, Graves? Yes, sir. Here. Here it is, sir. Thank you. Hmm. Five cartridges. Blank cartridges, if you'll notice, Mr. Cranston. Blank cartridges? Five blank cartridges, Graves. But that sixth cartridge, the one you fired at Miss Stillwell, how do we know that one was blank, eh? It was. It was, I tell you. But if it wasn't, If it wasn't, it's in Miss Stillwell's back right now. Maybe we'd better look and see, Cranston. Perhaps we'd better. Particularly before we let Mr. Graves leave the theater. I'm sure the medical examiner will forgive us for... The lights! They've gone out. Stand where you are, Graves. Who said that light switch? Who did that? Turn them on, McPhail. Trying... Let's see where I'm going. Oh, here it is. There. Okay, now? Okay, McPhail. The lights are on, Mr. but... Mr. Cranston! Grace, what is it? Miss Stillwell! Miss Stillwell? Look! Her body, it's... It's disappeared! What? What did you say, Graves? He's right. A corpse has vanished, McPhail. But I was standing right behind, yes. beside it. Yes, You bet you were. And we were just going to take a look to see if that six cartridge was in the body when the body conveniently disappears. Mr. McPhail... You don't think I'm not I... thinking anymore, Graves. I see it all now. McPhail, what do you mean? Give me the gun, Cranston. Yes, thanks. I'll show you how it all happened. Now, I'm Graves, you see. It's the last few minutes of the play. Graves? Yes, sir? Stand where Miss Stillwell was standing in that last scene. Mr. McPhail, you can't believe Go that Go on, I... do as I tell you. All right. Yes, that's right. Just about there. Now, what did she do, Graves? She walked over here to the organ and... Began to play. All right, do it. What, sir? Sit down and play the way she did. Uh, I'll try, sir, but... Do it! Watch, Cranston. Now, I'm Graves. I point the gun at her. She keeps playing. I say, no, no, and then I fire. You see? You see, he fired just at this level. The shot would have... All right, Graves, that's all. Get away from that keyboard and... Cranston! McPhail! That's the same note that Miss Stillwell was playing when she died. It was the organ. That's what killed her. The organ? Stand back. Don't touch it. That particular key is charged with enough electric voltage to bring instantaneous death. Graves! Graves! Is he... Yes. He's dead. Oh, I... 
I don't understand it. I, what's happening here tonight? What is it, Cranston? <laughs> Dead man's revenge. Did you hear that? Dead man's revenge? Yes. Where'd it come from, McPhail? I couldn't quite tell. It must have meant poor Graves here or... Lamont! Lamont, help me! That was Margot's voice. I could tell where that came from. Hello. Yes. McPhail, is there a cellar under the stage? Yes, but I've never had occasion to go down well, there. we've got occasion now, McPhail. Come on, follow me. This is directly under the stage, isn't it, McPhail? Yes, it's just about. Well, there's an artfully concealed trap door up there somewhere. Ten to one, Miss Stilwell's body was yanked through it from below here when the lights went out. I think you're right, Lamont, but let's take it easy. We don't know what we might be running into down here. This is no time to proceed with caution, McPhail. Still, it won't do any good for us to get... Listen. There it is. There, see? Coming down the corridor towards us. The Phantom. It's Carter to the life. As like him as I'm like myself. Watch. He's turning off. See? He's going into that room. If you ask me, we'd better... Ah! Margot's in that room. Hurry, McPhail. Margot! Margot! Lamont! Lamont! They'll never help you, Miss Lane. Lamont! Let Miss Lane go or I'll... If there's anything you can imagine you can do, Mr. Cranston, you may try it. I will. Come on, McPhail. Take warning. Look out, Lamont! Margot, I... Oh. Ah. Good work, McPhail. Excellent, excellent work. How's Miss Lane? She's fainted. All right, get her out of here, Humphreys. Take her up on the stage. Yes, McPhail. What about Cranston? I'm turning on this gas jet, Humphreys, and leaving him here in unconscious bliss. Ah. <laughs> I hope you like your new home, Cranston. You're staying here a long, long time. <laughs> Lamont. She'll be coming oh. to in a minute, McPhail. All right, get Graves' body off the organ bench, Humphreys. And take off that makeup of yours. I don't like looking at the replica of a dead man. Oh, you don't need to be scared of me, McPhail. There. That takes care of Graves. Now disconnect the organ voltage switch. I will. I will in a minute. Good. You did a great job, Humphreys. I wouldn't be surprised if that impersonation of John Carter wasn't the best acting of your whole career. You were a success, McPhail. The dead bodies the police will find here were killed by the ghost of John Carter. This theater... Why, after tonight, nobody would ever touch this theater for fear of their lives. And we can buy it for peanuts. And then we can sell it to the bus company for a terminal oh. at our own price. I hope so. I uh, didn't go through this for nothing. Lamont. Uh, come on. Sit in that chair over there, Humphreys, and pull your collar up around your face. Uh, what's the idea? The last act, pal. The last uh. act. You're a detective, and Miss Lane mm. is going to give us a little organ recital. Oh, I see Lamont. what you mean. Lamont. You're all right, Miss Lane. Oh, Mr. McPhail. Where's Lamont? There, there now. Everything's oh. all right now. The police have arrived. Commissioner Weston? No, no, he'll be here in a minute with Lamont. But there's a detective over there oh. who wants you to show him just what Miss Stilwell did before she was murdered. A detective? Yes. Over here, Miss Lane, with a coat all around me. Oh. Why don't they keep these theaters warm? Uh, now, Miss Lane... Right over to the organ, please. Uh, yes, yes, that, that, yes, that's right. All right. Uh, now, what did Miss Stilwell do just before she was killed? Before she was killed? Well, she... Oh, yes, well, she played the organ. Uh, could you play what she played, Miss Lane? Well, I think so. Let me see. It, it went something like this. I think... I think it was like this. I, I can't read. Then what came next? Next? Oh, let's... Yes. It was like this. Just like this. Stop! Huh? <laughs> Who said stop? <laughs> McPhail. What is it? What is it? It is the shadow, my friends. The voice of your doom. The shadow? Well, I can't see anything. There's just a voice. I am here with you, McPhail, Humphreys. Your plan has failed. It'll not help you to kill Miss Lane. I've already informed the police. They'll be here at any moment. Police, let me out of here. Stand back. Oh. Back, McPhail. You'll wait in this room for the justice of the law. All right. All right, but, but you'll tell them the truth, won't you, boys? What is the truth, McPhail? That I didn't kill anybody. It was Humphreys did it all. You're a liar, McPhail. He wired the organ. He killed Miss Stillwell and Graves. He did it all, I tell you. And he will pay for it, McPhail. And so will you. Oh, no. You may have McPhail, but not me. Stop him, Shadow. Don't let him get to the organ. Humphreys, not until I'm dead. The 
penalty for your crimes was inevitable, Humphreys. Fate has given you her own bitter justice. <laughs> But Lamont Cranston didn't die, McPhail. I've seen him since then. No. The blow wasn't as heavy as I thought, you see. Yes, he came to in time to stop the gas jet and find his way out of the cellar. <laughs> well, boys, I said I'd give you a lead-off for the morning edition, and I've just finished in time. Time, Mr. McPhail. Are you ready, McPhail? Sure. Sure, I'm ready. All right, you newspapermen. Outside. We're taking the prisoner from his cell to the chambers. Okay, warden. We're going. Uh, don't fold up, McPhail. Pardon I'll be over soon. Oh, don't worry about me, warden. I won't crack. Thanks for the story, McPhail. Anything you'd like for a last request? No, I... Yes. yes. Wait a moment. I... Could you just print... Bill McPhail, dramatic director was excellent last night in his final and farewell production. In a moment, we'll describe a real-life crime taken from police annals. But first, here is Blue Coal's distinguished home heating expert, John Barclay. Mr. Barclay. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I hear some homeowners complain that they burn too much coal and get poor results. Well, the chances are they're burning the wrong size coal. And remember, it's just as important to use the right size coal as it is to use a good quality coal. You see, anthracite comes in four domestic sizes, egg, stove, chestnut, and pea. Now, we all know that any of these will burn in the average furnace. But if you want to get your money's worth in clean, even, trouble-free heat, there is one size or combination of sizes best suited to your particular heating plant. And if you're not sure which is the right size for your furnace, take my tip and call your blue coal dealer. He'll send a John Barclay serviceman who'll measure up your furnace and tell you exactly which size coal you should burn for the best heating results. And folks, while the service man is there, ask him for a demonstration of that great little time, trouble, and fuel saver, the blue coal heat regulator. This simple device automatically controls the furnace dampers from upstairs. It keeps your home at a normal, even, healthful temperature at all times without any attention from you. And besides, it quickly pays for itself in fuel savings. Thank you. The Shadow Program is based on a story copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications. The characters, names, places, and plot are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. We now bring you an episode from real life, proving that crime does not pay. James Woodward was rough, tough, reckless. A hold-up man afraid of nothing. Early one morning, he walked down 119th Street in New York City spotted a likely victim, drew his gun and shoved it into the man's ribs. Not a squawk out of you. Keep your hands down. Hey, what do you think you're doing? Oh, tough guy, eh? <clears throat> Give me that wallet. You made a bad mistake, James Woodward. The man you robbed is a plain-clothes policeman. Halt! Hold or I'll shoot! Ah, <laughs> oh, my head! My head! Inside the hospital with a head wound and a charge of attempted robbery against him went amateur hold-up man Woodward. A bloody warning that... The weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. The shadow knows. Next week, same time, same station, your friendly blue coal dealer brings you another strange and thrilling adventure in the shadow's daring battle against the forces of evil. 
be sure to listen. And be sure to phone your neighborhood Blue Coal dealer for greater heating comfort at less cost. Remember, keep the home fires burning with Blue Coal. This story produced by the DLNW Coal Company, distributors of Blue Coal. That concludes today's episode. We'd like to thank you and remind you to donate at choiceclassicradio.com. Remember, your donations make episodes like this possible.